Hi YouTube, long time no see. I am going to do a video today that's actually a part of a series that I've been doing on my Patreon. And so I'm just doing a portion of that series and uploading it here so that you guys can kind of get an idea of the material I'm uploading there. The video that I'm gonna do today is going to be talking about how to identify mixed Myers-Briggs types. And what I'm gonna do is give you some real life examples. I'm not gonna go into what a mixed Myers-Briggs type is for the most part, because I've covered a lot of that in the content that I have on my Patreon page. So again, if you wanna get caught up there and you know get all of the other stuff that I've uploaded in this series, you can go there. I'm going to include a link to that in the bottom of here and you can access that content for as little as $1 a month. $1 a month gets you access to blog posts and videos. $2 a month gets you access to blog posts, videos, and then I do MP3s that you can listen to. And then $3 a month, you get all of that. You also have the opportunity to send questions to me and I make monthly Q&A videos when I have questions, answering those questions and the people that subscribe $3 or more a month get access to those videos. And at $3 or more a month, you get one free session when you sign up. So that's a really cool thing to sign up for. For those of you that don't know, Patreon is a platform for people that create content like this, just content of all kinds, artists that are trying to raise enough money so that they can invest more in the art that they're doing. So that's what I'm doing as well trying to raise some money there so that I can quit working my part-time job and do this full-time. So that's what the money that you pledge is going to. So anyways, check it out. It's super cool. Again, link is down there. And with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and jump into today's content, which is how to identify Myers-Briggs mixed types. And today I'm going to be doing the NT edition. That's ENTJ, ENTP, INTJ, and INTP. And I'm going to go ahead and start with ENTJ. All right, so let's say we have an ENTJ who scores moderately on both sides of the perceiving dichotomy, which is sensing versus intuition. Technically scores higher on the intuition side, but they've got a significant amount of sensing traits as well. This is the ENTJ that's gonna be a little bit harder to type because they could look a little bit like an ESTJ. And here's an example. So one trait we may find with an ENTJ, you know, a mixed type with some significant sensing preferences is this may be an ENTJ that's more prone to trust past experiences. And that's going to combat with that secondary introverted intuitive function that they have. And, and they're still dominant in that function. That's primarily what they're operating from. That's kind of leading the way. They're intuitively putting things together and getting an idea of how things can get done and what's going to work and what's not going to work. But there's going to be a significant portion of them that has these ideas and plans these things out, but they're going to stop and say to themselves, you know what? This isn't really practical in the past. This hasn't worked before. I'm just going to abandon this. Or they may even say in the past, it, it has been working before. So why reinvent the wheel, the wheel? And this can create an ENTJ that looks a little bit more small-minded in terms of planning a bigger picture. It, it's almost like they're planning a bigger picture, but it's like a miniature version of a bigger picture. They're more immediate focused than long-term focused because they weigh the ideas that they have against what's already being done. And if it's working, that's great. And then if it's not, they can go ahead and change it. But this is also an ENTJ too, that I have found tends to be a little bit more easily influenced by the input of other people. So somebody could come and say, um, I've had this experience, this experience, this experience, blah, 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 blah. This is an ENTJ that's more likely to give weight to those testimonies instead of saying, okay, I, I hear what you're saying, but actually there's this component going on that you don't know about that could really work. Okay, ENTP. 
Let's say that we have an ENTP that is balanced on the judging dichotomy, so feeling and thinking, predominantly on the thinking side, but has some significant feeling tendencies as well. An example of an ENTP like this would be an ENTP who is generating lots of new ideas and has ideas of things that they wanna do or things that they can implement just to make things better, but at the same time, they're aware that their decisions are going to have an impact on other people. And so this is the ENTP that if they were to be told that, you know, this thing that you're doing, this idea that you're gonna have, it's gonna cause X, Y, and Z problems, you know, for other people, please don't do this. This is the ENTP that's gonna take that into very serious consideration. Hell, this is an ENTP that may go so far as to check with other people. You know, they, they may say, let, let's say we have an ENTP that's married and he may go to his wife and say, I want to leave my career that I've had for 20 years that's stable and that pays well because I've always had this dream to do this thing right over here and I've come up with an idea about how I think I could get my foot in the door in this industry. I found an opportunity. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. I really want to take it even though it's going to put us very significantly at financial risk. Th that's the sort of ENTP that I'm talking about with those um, feeling preferences versus, I mean, what we could call, you know, a standard ENTP, which just kind of goes along like a little tornado and just does what they want to do. And sometimes that can backfire and cause problems for other people. And those ENTPs tend not to notice it. And when they do notice it, uh, in my experience, they've been able to rationalize it away. They can say, well, it's okay, this, this, and this is okay because what you can't see yet that I promise you I can see is all of these benefits down the line. And some ENTPs, especially when they're really heavy on that thinking function, just don't give a fuck, period. INTJ. Let's say that we have an INTJ that is fairly balanced on the fourth dichotomy, which is perceiving versus judging. This kind of an INTJ is an INTJ that's still very focused. INTJs usually have very structured ideas about their life and what they want to achieve and what they're working for. And it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, they come out of college and they're like, this is my dream career, I'm gonna do it no matter what. But they tend to have a very general idea of what they're working for and they are trying to structure their lives to get to that point. This may be an INTJ, again, having some significant preferences for the perceiving function who kind of goes along with life, you know, and every few years or so, you know, every, every five years, just as a random example, kind of assesses things and they're like, you know, I'm a little bored with this. I'm a little burnt out. I think I want to change things up and just kind of, I don't know, turn my life upside down on its head in some way or another and, ju and just do something different. And I'll give you an example. This is something that could commonly be found with a five INTJ. And one thing that I've noticed that I think stimulates this is being a five, you have to have that constant mental stimulation. And fives in general, I don't care what their Myers-Briggs type is, they can get into a topic and become very expert in that topic. And at some point, if they feel like they've reached the extent of what they could learn in that topic, they, they have to find something else because their intellectual stimulation isn't there anymore and they have to maintain that intellectual stimulation. So it's kind of like that. If you have that INTJ that has that um, P preferences too, this is that INTJ that may have that structured life and that idea of what they wanna do and this expertise and this thing that they've been working on for years and years and years and this reputation that they've made for themselves and then kind of one day slowly start to phase that out because it's kind of like, there are other things that I could do, this is kind of boring, you know what I mean? So that's an example of an INTJ that may have some significant perceiving preferences. For INTP, let's say that we have an INTP that has some, significant extroverted tendency. So they're not a hardcore introvert. They're very balanced on the E and I dichotomy. Uh, an example, this is an INTP 
that usually very quiet and reserved and kind of waits until they've got an opportunity to insert themselves in conversation and even then still really does more listening and assessing than they do talking and contributing. This is the INTP that may, you know, be in that situation. They're in a conversation where they're listening to what's being talked about and they're just kind of thinking about what people are saying, but then somebody mentions something that they're really interested in. And this is the INTP that comes alive and they have lots of energy and they're engaging with everybody because they heard something that just is fascinating to them and they wanna dive right into that conversation and contribute a lot and start debating with people and asking other people for their perspectives and they'll go on and on and on and talk your ear off and um, really, really engage. And it's almost like for this kind of INTP, it's like a switch flips. And if you don't know this person very well, you know, and maybe you're trying to type them, you could say, oh, well, I think this person is an INTP, but then you see them switch like that and they can just go on for hours once they get engaged with something that interests them, you know, with other people and stuff. And you might start to rethink like, oh, maybe this is an ENTP versus an introvert that may or may not get involved even when they hear somebody talking about something that they're fascinated with. Like I know I can speak to this as an introvert and by the way, my scoring on the extended advanced Myers-Briggs test is like hardcore introvert. Like I got, <laughs> I think it was 98 or 99% introvert and like one or 2% extrovert. And for those of you that are extroverts, or perhaps you are not like a hardcore introvert such as yours truly, what you may not know is introverts, even in conversations, if, if they're hearing somebody talk about something that they're interested in, that doesn't necessarily mean the introvert wants anything to do with that conversation. I can speak to this because me loving this and loving what I do, so few people know about it that I meet in my daily life and the ones that I do have a rudimentary understanding at best. Um, and so a lot of times, like my boyfriend will go out, you know, places with me and he's an ENFP and he's a seven. He's all over the place talking to everybody and their grandmother up one side and down the other. And I'll just kind of go off to the side and I'm listening, minding my own business, reading a book, you know, going through all the niceties, nice to meet you, blah, 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 whatever. And he will <laughs> intentionally bring up the Enneagram and Myers-Briggs and he'll say, oh, have you guys heard about this? And a lot of people get genuinely interested and they don't know anything about it and they'll start asking questions and he'll say, you need to go talk to her. She can answer all your questions and teach you all this cool stuff and blah, 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 blah. And I fucking hate him for that because I'm intentionally trying to not be involved in this. I don't even care if it is the Enneagram or Myers-Briggs. Like sometimes I just don't wanna fucking talk about it. You know what I mean? Like it's not my whole fucking life. I have other things in my life. <laughs> and people will come and they'll, you know, wanna talk to me about it and ask questions. And I'm like, just, I refer them to my YouTube channel and shit. I'm just like, just go there. Like, I don't wanna teach you about the Enneagram. I want you to go away. This is why I have a YouTube channel so that I don't actually have to teach people this face-to-face -face in real life. I can say it fucking once in a video and then I just have a link I can share because I don't wanna keep talking about the same thing over and over again. So that's, a, that's an example of what a very true introvert would be like. And so again, I'm tying this back into the INTP with extroverted tendencies who, unlike me, you know, if, if I were an INTP with extroverted tendencies, my boyfriend may go tell all of the, hell, he's not even going to send them to me. I would overhear him talking to people about the Enneagram and Myers-Briggs and I would perk up and go and jump right in the conversation and be like, oh, I know a lot about that. If you guys have any questions, I can try and type you. Here's my YouTube channel. What questions do you have? Like, what is your type? Blah, blah, blah. And th that's an introvert with some extroverted tendencies, which I, I don't have at all. So those are some examples of Myers-Briggs types with um, mixed types is what they're called. And again, it's the NT edition, ENTJ, ENTP, INTJ, INTP. The INTP, say that 10 times fast. <laughs> As usual, the information that you need, you know, for me and my life and stuff is uh, down in the bottom here. Again, the link to my Patreon. I'm gonna put my website in there too. I have a Twitter account and then I can put information about booking sessions too. For those of you don't who don't know, I'm a certified life coach. I have a certification in Myers-Briggs with life coaching and then also how to use the Enneagram 
in a uh, counseling session. My master's education, my graduate education is in counseling. My bachelor's is in psychology with an emphasis in personality theory. So this is what I do. If you are interested in any sort of life coaching session, which is what I call it because I am not licensed by the state as a counselor. And in Texas, you cannot legally advertise yourself as a counselor unless you're licensed by the state. So if you want any professional life coaching sessions, uh, my website's a great place to go. All of the information will be in there. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So it was very nice to see you guys. I will come back when I have time, please give me time. To whom it may concern, please just give me more than fucking 24 hours in a day. It would be so appreciated, like thanks. Um, so anyways, until next time, share the video, share all my shit because I'm awesome and people need to know about me. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed, that's like really important and stuff, so. Yeah, I don't know if you guys know this, but I earn money when you subscribe to the channel. So, I mean, you can have the notifications on if you wanna be notified about new content. Um, you don't have to do that if you don't want to, but YouTubers, when they have a YouTube channel, subscribers, your number of subscribers is how you make money, part of how you make money. You have to have a certain number of subscribers to make money, and depending on how many you have, you're within this bracket of how much money they will pay you and then you you get the opportunity to start putting commercials in your videos and then every time a commercial comes up you get a certain amount of money for that commercial within the bracket based on the number of subscribers that you have so at the very least if you want to help assist out just hit that subscribe button get my numbers up you know because i got like i'm a single mom i got like bills and shit. so i'm talking a whole lot i haven't seen you guys in forever it's been crazy but Anyways, I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching. And I will talk to you later at some point in my life.